Justine, up all night again? Unfortunately, yes. Well, why didn't you call me? I could have helped. I was at the house all night. <laughs> I know, but I knew you must have been asleep. And since you usually don't wake me when you have to pull an all-nighter, I thought I could return the favor for once. With as much time as we spend in this lab, Spook House should furnish us with a bed. That would be nice. These dissecting tables are seriously lacking in comfort. I hear you're going out in the field. Be careful. Don't worry. Just feed Dr. Faustus while I'm gone. Will do. The Colonel's waiting for you. You'd better go. I'll pack my things after the briefing. A oh, holiday. Please, have a seat. Colonel, your message sounded urgent. Where is the stranger? Speaking with Svetlana. He'll be in shortly. All right, so let's bring you up to speed then. We've received news of some rather violent murders in Maryland. An old hermit named Rustin Parr walked into Burkittsville and announced that he was finally finished. When authorities searched his house, they discovered the bodies of seven children in the cellar. All of them horribly mutilated to quite a gruesome way. Mutilated? Ritualistically tortured before being killed. He'd carved symbols of some kind into their bodies. He disemboweled each of them. The entrails were never found. Colonel. The FBI sent agents to assist the local sheriff. And their reports lead us to believe there's more at work in that little town than the actions of one insane old man. Pa told police that he killed for an old woman ghost that lives in the woods. Well, that began the local recirculation of legends about the Blair Witch. I suppose I should have expected that reaction. Yes, he doesn't like being sent anywhere. He can't shoot something. Nevertheless, I want you to go to Burkittsville and investigate. Call in stranger if you need help. If anyone asks, tell them that your niece has been missing for several months and that you think this Pa character might have had something to do with it. And do avoid confrontation. These people have been living a nightmare. Frightening them any further simply will not do. I'll keep that in mind, Colonel. thinking the same thing. Where's Justine? Away. She said sorry she could not stay and uh, be careful on your mission. I see you are traveling light, as usual. Yes, well, we mortals have to depend on our equipment. Right, stranger? Speaking of which... Damn it, stranger! You've been going through my things again! How many times do I have to tell you hands off? Svetlana, I'm going to need my spectral proximity sensor. Are you finished with it? Yeah, I was actually returning it. Expecting ghosts in the woods? You never know what's out there. I know what's not out there. You see, Svetlana, since Stranger has never found evidence to substantiate any of the Black Hills legends, Blair Witch or otherwise, the case is closed as far as he's concerned. If something's not there, it's not there. You can look all you want. You never had the SPS before, so you could have been surrounded by ghosts the entire time and never known it. I'll find out for sure. What are you packing? Ugh. It's the Enhanced Charged Radiance Emitter. A glorified flashlight at best. 
It seems you found it useful in Germany. So the Blair Witch is a vampire. Well, that's not likely. But either way, I'll be prepared. Besides, I've made some enhancements. The charge time is decreased, and it operates on a far wider spectrum. I'm hoping it also affects ghosts and specters. Mm -hmm. Taking anything that shoots real bullets. My Luger and a Delisle carbine. Good choices. Quiet. Colonel's advice, huh? Ah, yes. Mustn't forget your trusty recorder. Oh, it's more than a recorder. It can also manipulate audio signals. With it, I can hear sounds that are normally undetectable. And the fancy camera you modified. Photographic records are essential to my research. Well, I guess that's about everything. Good luck, Doctor. Not going to wish me luck. If you still need luck with all that gear, you're really in trouble. Oh, and be sure and call me if you run into any actual monsters. Welcome to Burkittsville, ma'am. Uh, I'd like a room, please. Certainly. Will your husband be joining you? I'm not married. I see. So you're, uh, traveling alone, then? I am. Is there a problem? Oh, <laughs> certainly not, ma'am. No, no problem at all. We just don't get many visitors through here, that's all. Except for the reporters, of course. The last of them finally cleared out this morning. Good riddance, I say. So, what did happen then, exactly? God only knows what the papers outside of town are saying. I'm sure they're having a field day with it. Not that the story isn't terrific enough as it is. Our local paper, the Register, will give you the best account. You should see about picking up a copy. Here's your key. I put you in room four. How long do you think you'll be staying with us? Um, a few days, I imagine. Field notes of Dr. Elspeth Holliday, Burkittsville, Maryland, July 21st, 1941. I've only been here half an hour, and already the small-town attitude is getting on my nerves. The manager at Burkittsville's only inn just stood there waiting for my husband to show up. Guess he's never seen a woman travelling alone. I'll see the sheriff next, play up my cover story, and maybe aim for a little pity. The helpless woman routine should go over easily in this town. I can't carry all my gear in town. I'll get it before I go into the woods. I don't have time for a bath right now. There's nothing of interest in that direction. Oh! <laughs> Snuck up on me, huh? What can I do you for? Sorry, I didn't mean to surprise you. My name is Elspeth Holliday. I'm Horace Gersten. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Register. Are you a reporter? 
Oh, you've missed the big story. So I've heard. But I'm not a reporter, and, and that's not why I'm here. Well, not directly, anyway. I see. Well, this sounds interesting. My eight-year-old niece has been missing for months. I'm trying to find some information about Rustin Pa. Well, you came to the right place. I can give you the morning edition. It'll bring you up to date. Oh, that would be wonderful. You seem awfully busy. You've broken the big story, haven't you? Oh, <laughs> already wrapped that. I'm on to a bigger one. <laughs> This town ain't seen nothing yet. Is there anything else you can tell me about Pa? Well, I could, but well, you'd probably better talk to the sheriff first. Have you met Junior? Not yet, no. Well, that's really who you should talk to. Yeah, Junior's office is in the middle of town, town hall. A current issue of the Register, Burkittsville's only paper. The church is closed for the night. Closed. I'll have to come back tomorrow. I suppose I should head over to the diner, get something to eat. Maybe I can pick up some local gossip. Mm. This must be where pies go when they die. Hi, honey. My name's Gretchen. What can I get for you today? I'll just have the blue plate special. Thank you. I'm Peter Durant. Gretchen here owns this place, and she's the best darn cook in the county. Oh, Peter, stop. You're new in town, aren't you? No, I'm just visiting. My name's Elspeth Holliday. It's nice to meet you. Uh, what brings you to Burkittsville? You're not another reporter, I hope. Oh, no. Um, my sister's daughter disappeared a few months ago in Martinsburg. Oh, no, honey. That's just awful. Terrible. You don't think Rustin Parr had anything to do with it, do you? I certainly hope not. But it is possible. I'm in town to talk to the sheriff who investigated the case. The sheriff's name is Damon Bowers. Town Hall is down the street on the other side of the church. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Durant, if you don't mind my asking, what is your occupation? Not rude at all. I'm a librarian and head of the Burkittsville Historical Society. An historian? Ah, any areas of expertise? Well, just the history of Burkittsville. I guess you could call me an authority. I've been studying it all my life. Oh, interesting. Oh, it really is. We have quite a colorful history here. These uh, recent events have brought to light one of our oldest legends, stories about the Blair Witch. I've heard a few of the stories, but I don't really believe in that sort of thing. I do. I witnessed it myself. When I was a kid, a girl I knew named Robin Weaver disappeared in the woods. What happened to her? She eventually made her way back to town. And? Oh, it wasn't what happened to her that scared me. Heck, it still scares me now. This might sound silly, but uh, I'd rather not tell the story at night. If you are interested in our history, come by the library tomorrow. We have plenty of written documentation. 
And uh, if you pry, I may tell you my account of the Robin Weaver story. I might take you up on that offer. Uh, now, you said this girl, Robin Weaver, came out all right. What happened while she was gone? You should ask her. She still lives here. Careful, though. She's a little peculiar. Gretchen. It's true, Peter. That may be, but uh, Miss Holiday, Robin Weaver's always been a bit eccentric, even when she was a child. She keeps to herself most of the time now and would probably prefer being left alone. You know, you should stop by the newspaper office. The editor's name is Horace Gersten. He's been there a long time. He could tell you a lot of stories. It's pretty late now, but with the madness of the trial and all, he's been keeping some late hours. I bet he's still there. Yes, I met him. We didn't discuss much, though. He seemed awfully busy. Well, you might keep Horace in mind, just in case you don't find everything you're looking for in Peter's library. As for Parr specifically, try talking to people who knew the victims. Anyone that knows Kyle Brody might help. Kyle's the boy that escaped from Rustin Parr. Word is, he was forced to face the corner and listen as Parr did horrible things to those children. Can you imagine? He hasn't spoken a single word since he got back. But his teacher at the school is close to all the children of Burkittsville. Maybe she can help you. Oh, honey, I've been talking your ear off. Your dinner's getting cold. You go on and eat now. I've just met the town's librarian, Peter Durant, who promises to have a lot of information about local legends and mythology. So I'll visit the library tomorrow. Burkittsville residents are no strangers to the Blair Witch legends. Interesting that no one seems to have any first-hand experience with a witch, but nearly everyone claims to know someone who has, or know someone who knows someone. Ma'am, how was your first day in Burkittsville? A long one. Tomorrow will be worse, I'm afraid. I'm planning on visiting Rustin Parr's place. You realize it's a four-hour walk, right? Do you even have a map? No. Where can I get one? Hmm. Don't rightly know. The uh, general store up the street, maybe? But, well, you, you just be careful, ma'am. Those woods are plenty dangerous. Wild animals? Animals? <laughs> no, no, ma'am. Animals stay out of those woods. They know better. Sometimes animals have more sense than people. So what should I be careful of? I pray to God you don't find out. And just stay away from Tappy East Creek. That's where she lives. Who? About a hundred years ago, she reached her pale white hand out of the water and pulled a little girl into the river. They never found the body. She's still down there in the water, waiting for another victim. You're talking about the Blair Witch. I don't ever want to say that. She hears you when you say your name. Stay away from that creek, man. For the love of God, stay away from that forest altogether. Now, good night. There's no phone in this room. Oh, how am I supposed to check in with Spook House? I'll have to talk to that innkeeper about it tomorrow.
I can track it with my spectral proximity sensor. Hello, anybody here? me are you a daymite what the hell is going on here I've never heard of daymites this far north Hello? Anybody here?
I'm not ready to go into the forest just yet. It won't open. This must be where pies go when they die. We are in your mind. You can do better than that. We are in your mind. We are in your mind. You can do better than that. <laughs> God, I loathe daymites.
It's locked. on me. What have I done? I've killed all of them. just had the most disturbing dream. The people of Burkittsville turned into horrible creatures. I killed all of them, but then they transformed back into humans. I had no choice. I lost control of myself. I killed those people. I remember seeing the stranger. He was standing above me, looking down. God, I was dead. I was shot through the head. But the gun was in my hand. I wonder what it all means. This town must be really getting to me. I wish I'd just fled from the monsters, ran into the forest or something, so I wouldn't have been forced to kill them. I can't carry all my gear in town. I'll get it before I go into the woods. Miss Holliday. Hello. I hate to pry, but uh, what brings you to the town of Burkittsville, anyway? Actually, I'm here on rather grim business. I have a sister who lives in Martinsburg. A few months ago, 
Her daughter disappeared. Oh my! That that's just awful, man. You don't think Rustin Park? After three months, we're desperate to find any clue. So, what do you know about Pa? Not much. Pa was a hermit. He only came into town when he had to. No one really knew old Rustin. Enjoying your stay so far? Well, I might fare better if I had a telephone in my room. Oh, well, you see, this is a small town. We only got two phones. One's in the sheriff's office. The other's at the school in case of emergencies. We got a couple of telegraph machines, though. I got one right here. That will do. Can you send a wire now? Suppose so. Where to? This address, please. Ready. Have some leads. Stop. Tell S to stay home. Stop. Love, Elspeth. Stop. All done. Thank you. Hold it. Stop right there. Are you Sheriff Bowers? I know why you're here. Martinsburg's out of my jurisdiction. Check with the sheriff there. We've done that, thank you. But there's been no sign of Jenny since she vanished. We are completely out of leads, and my sister's getting desperate. So I decided to come here and see... And you think Rustin Parr took your niece? <sighs> Listen, lady. Eight children disappeared from this town. One of them is back home right now, staring at the corner of his room. The other seven we dug out of shallow graves in Parr's basement. We searched every corner of that house. There was nothing else there. Be on your way. Sheriff had a point, you know. All seven kids we found in Parr's basement were local kids. I'd like to see his house. The par place? Um, yeah. Well, you see, the day they sentenced par, a lot of folks, well, they got all worked up and went out to his house, uh, burned it to the ground. They destroyed the house? Now, these people have been through hell this year. Now, I'm not excusing what they did, but tempers were running hot. Some of these people lost their children. And it's not like there was anything left out there anyway. We went over the entire place with a fine-tooth comb. We found everything we needed to put Par away for good. <laughs> this trial was quick. Is there any way I could talk to the judge who presided? I've got some questions I'd like to ask. Well, that trial must have worn him out because he just, um, up and left without telling anyone. I came in and that sign was on the door. It's not really like him, but he's earned a few days off. There's a note on the door. On vacation back next Monday. I'd better not tamper with this. The sheriff has proven less than helpful. He's on edge and openly hostile to me. The deputy, on the other hand, might be willing to help. I should talk to him when the sheriff isn't around. <sighs> that these people destroyed the crime scene is infuriating. There's no way that this backwater sheriff could have found the clues that I suspect littered that place. So much evidence lost. Hello. Daniel Cole. What do you want? I, um, I'm looking for my niece. She's not here. Thank you. I can see that. 
but she's been missing for months. We think she's been kidnapped, or perhaps Rust and Pa. I told the police everything I know about Pa. He came in here and said, I'm finally finished. Then the police found the missing kids at his place. End of story. Now, is there anything you'd like to buy? This is a store, after all. I'd like to purchase a map of the forest. Lady, I have maps of streets. They don't make maps of forests. I'm not running a tourist shop here. Anything else I can help you with? I'd appreciate it if you left now. Welcome back, Miss Holiday. Sleep well last night? Oh, not really. I had the most disturbing dream. Haven't we all? I doubt anybody in this town's getting much sleep lately. Can I get you something to eat? Just coffee, thanks. So, have you talked to the sheriff about your niece yet? I did, unfortunately. Ooh, I think I know what you mean. He's not a particularly jolly fellow to begin with. To be quite honest, sometimes he's even downright mean, especially to women. But he's been unusually cranky, even for him. Speak of the devil. Gretchen. Uh, hello yourself. Uh, what can I get for you? The usual? You bet. Talk to you later, hon. What's wrong with you, lady? Now's my chance to speak to the deputy alone. He obviously wanted to talk before, but the sheriff put a quick stop to that. Ma'am? Miss Holliday? Um, yes? Well, since the sheriff isn't here right now, I wanted to tell you... Well, I can't offer you much help, but this might be of some use. Every so often, I find these crazy stick figures in Parr's cell. And for the life of me, I can't figure out how he gets them in there. Would you be able to give one to me? Well, I had no need of them, so I've always thrown them out. Sorry. I wish there was more I could do to help. Well, actually, there is. Do you have a map that would lead me to Parr's house? You know, there's nothing left out there but smoldering wood. Yes, but I still need to see it for myself. Look, I'm sure we don't have much time before the sheriff gets back, and I can't waste it playing games. You seem like a good man, and I hope I can trust you. Trust me with what? I'm a doctor, working for a secret government agency that deals specifically with cases like Rust and Paws. What? And what agency would that be? If I told you it wouldn't be much of a secret, would it? <laughs> I suppose not. What about your... Missing niece? The missing niece is a fabrication, a cover story. It's important that you believe me now, Mr. Hobart. Call me Charlie. You know, Sheriff Bowers would lock you up if he heard the things you just told me. I know, but I had to take that chance. Please, Charlie, I need that map. The sheriff would have my hide if he found it missing. But I tell you what, we just won't tell him, will we? I gotta warn you, though. The map isn't complete. It'll get you close, but you'll have to find the house on your own once you get there. The path leading into the forest is behind the school. Thank you, Charlie. I'd better not tamper with this. At least now I have a map to what's left of Pa's house.
Ah, nice to see you again, Miss Holliday. Still interested in learning about our local legends? Absolutely. Uh, this book will reveal many things to you. As a single source, it doesn't constitute proof, but I have other volumes that verify its claims. Well, books can only explain so much, but thank you. I'm sure I'll find it fascinating. Finally, I found someone in this little town that doesn't get on my nerves. The town librarian, Peter Durant, is well-educated and quite helpful. He also seems to be the sole link to the real history of Burkittsville. I tried to instill some doubt in him, but he's rock-solid in his beliefs. He gave me a book entitled Frederick County Tales of the Supernatural. Mm, mostly superstitions and local folklore. The few entries that mention the Blair Witch don't offer anything beyond what Spookhouse has already gathered. Is this everything that's been written concerning the Blair Witch? Believe any of it now? Uh-huh. Interesting, but hardly conclusive. Still planning on going into that forest? Yes, I am. Your funeral? I've been here before, in that dream. Even the window is shattered. Oh, hello there, young lady. I was so deep in prayer, I didn't hear you come in. I can return later if you're busy. 
Nonsense. God is eternal. He'll always be there when I return. But you're here now. You must be Elspeth Holliday. What can I do for you? Word gets around fast in this town. I'll say a prayer for your niece. I'd rather find an explanation in Burkittsville. After the Ruston Parr trial, I started wondering if maybe he... Oh, no. Not possible. Well, is there anything at all you can tell me about Parr? His is a lost soul. That's all? Oh, uh, out of curiosity, what happened to that stained glass window behind you? It's a mystery. I just found it that way last Sunday morning. Excuse me? Oh, good Lord. Hello there. I'm sorry. I must have drifted off. I can return later if you like. No, no, don't rush off. I'm Suzanne Ascot. Can I help you? My name is Elspeth Holliday. I'm here in search of my missing niece. Oh, no. This nightmare is endless. Are you all right? <laughs> all right? <sighs> How could I possibly be all right? Over half my students were slaughtered. <laughs> my children. I know what's happened must have taken a terrible toll on you. I wish there was something I could do. You'll have to excuse me. I, I haven't been myself lately. No, uh, there's nothing you can do for me. Thank you, though. Oh, I'm terribly sorry about your niece. Why don't you just leave town? Get away for a while. If it were only that easy. But that's up to my husband. Your husband? Mm-hmm. Stephen Ascot, pastor of the church. I've asked him, begged him to move away, but he refuses. He says that without him, no one would be left in the town to appeal to God. Satan would swallow Burkittsville whole. But we've already lost eight of our beautiful children. Eight? Now, I thought only seven died. Mm-hmm. Kyle Brody? Well, he isn't dead, but how could anyone say he's alive? Poor, poor boy. He'll never be the same. What's wrong with him? After he escaped from Parr. He became unreachable. He doesn't eat. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't talk. That's awful. He must have been severely traumatized. I just wish there was some way to pull those terrible memories out of his head. I do, too. Especially after a glimpse of what's in his mind. He drew this a few weeks ago. Some weird scribbles and symbols with the words, Leave me alone. That is disturbing. Yes, I know. I almost stopped going by to check on him after I saw this. It's just so heartbreaking. Would you mind if I kept this? Well, if you want it. I know I'd be happy never to see it again. Would it be possible for me to see Kyle? That's not a good idea. He's not big on strangers anymore. He's not the only one. You could always try, though. I'd love to have your help if you think there's a way you can break through to him. The Brody house is out behind the hotel.
The children Pa murdered accounted for half of the town's child population, and now it seems that the one survivor, a boy named Kyle Brody, is lost in a world of his own. The local school teacher, Suzanne Ascott, has been keeping track of Kyle's progress during his recovery from the abduction. She showed me one of the boy's drawings. There are strange symbols in the sketch that resemble alphabetic characters. Almost runic, but nothing I recognize. There might be something more to these markings. Perhaps Kyle saw these symbols at Ruston Pa's house. Well, if the townspeople hadn't burned the place to the ground, I could get samples and possibly translate the alphabet. Kyle Brody's house is behind the motel. I'll try to meet with him myself. How can I help you, ma'am? Mrs. Brody, I'm Elspeth Holliday. My sister... Yes, I've heard about you. And I am sorry for your loss, but you'll find no answers here. I'd like to speak with Kyle to see if he remembers anything about Jenny. You will do no such thing. Listen, Miss Holliday, I know the pain your family must be going through, but I don't know if my son will ever be the same. Some days he seems like he's making progress, and then he, he slips back away from me. It's a mother's worst nightmare. Since they found him in Pars, he's been like the walking dead. Oh, God, it rips my heart out to see him like this every day. Please, just go away. Just go. Don't bother my family anymore, for God's sake. We've been through enough. Goodbye, Miss Holiday. Just met Kyle Brody's mother. She's in pretty bad shape, and the boy's even worse. He sits on his porch, staring blankly off into space and clutching a ragged teddy bear. I'm convinced now that Pa was practicing some form of black magic. The symbols in Kyle's sketch are too uniform to be random scrawlings. They must be characters of, of some sort of alphabet, something that burned into his memory. They have some similarity with the demonic scripture I've seen. But how would Rust and Pa have learned a demon's alphabet? I'm ready to go into the woods now. I'd better take my gear with me.